Big Brother's biggest villain, Evil Dick, is surprisingly real right after this message. When you love who you are and stay true to yourself, you inspire others to do the same. Ask your healthcare provider if Big Tarvi is right for you, or visit BigTarvi.com to view the important facts, including important warnings. Hi there, welcome to Plus Talk on Plus Life, where we are about turning positive into a plus. Today, Big Brother's biggest villain and how he found out about HIV. Dick Donato joins me now. Hi Dick, how are you? I'm good, how are you? I'm very well, thank you for joining us via Skype from Florida. Uh, Dick, anyone who is anyone who has watched Big Brother or is in the sphere of Big Brother in this country knows you as evil Dick Donato. Before we get into the whole HIV thing, just how evil are you? The whole HIV thing, I like how that just comes in. Uh, how evil am I? Well, it's E-V-E-L, kind of after Evil Knievel. So, uh, so not so much evil, but uh, I don't know. I always say it like a stunt dick. You like a stunt dick. I like, <laughs> like a stunt dick. <laughs> right. Well, I hope you've got insurance on that. But you, you did become known as the villain. You're famous for being the villain on two seasons of Big Brother. So just give me a little bit of the back history on that before we get to what happened uh, the second time around on Big Brother. Well, um, uh, they put me on the show... Uh, I don't know. I, I had auditioned in season five. I made the finals, came very close to getting on. Same thing with season six. Um, season seven was in All Stars. They brought me back for season eight. And I basically told them either put me on or put me on or fuck off. Um, it was a lot of work. It, seriously, it's a, it was a lot of work. It's three months every time of paperwork that, uh, like, they can't even give you the whole contract at once. They give it to you like in little intervals because it's so like massive right. and they want so much information and they won't carry anything over from year to year. Like uh, the second time I was like, we'll just take that from last year. And they're yeah. like, oh, we can't do that. And I'm like, <laughs> that's like going to the, that's like going to the doctor and suddenly a doctor leaves and a new doctor comes in and they're like, you have to start the paperwork again. It's <laughs> yeah. like, why? All over again. He yeah. left. Why have I got to be punished? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah. So, um, yeah. So it's just a pain in the ass. So, uh, after the third time, and you have to plan on being gone for like three months. So you have to pay your rent ahead of time, your your gas, your electric, your cell phone, your car payment, your everything. And I'm just like a regular dude, man, just like living paycheck to paycheck and coming up with three months worth of every year for three years. It's like, all right, enough of this is enough. Either put me on the show or like, seriously, fuck off. I'm done with this. Um, so the, uh, that was the time that they put me on the show and, uh, and you they, won. yeah, they put me on with my daughter me and my daughter hadn't spoken in like two years. So, um, I don't know. We, uh, got together and, um, we just tore the house up, but we were a very good combination work. That was the best that we've ever got. The one thing that we did very, very well together, probably better than anyone else that's ever played the game was play that game together. Um, we don't really get along. We don't get along very well in like real life. We didn't talk for two years that time. We had a rocky year the year after the show. And then um, I don't know. We don't really we don't talk a whole lot um, now. So um, I'm sorry to hear that. But the, the producers invited you back to come back on, a, on the show for another round. Uh, and this is when things kind of your world sort of turned upside down, isn't it? Yeah, it was. Uh, yeah, it was very. I, I was I was a huge name on the show, so I, I wasn't surprised expecting uh, to go back. It was just a matter of when they were going to have me go back. Um, the ratings for my season were massive. Um, uh, I don't think that there's been a season since that has come like close to the numbers that we did uh, by the end of Big Brother 8. But um, so I knew I was going back on the show. It was just a matter of like when it was going to happen. And uh, my whole plan was I wanted to be the first two-time winner of the show. Um, so uh, that was, you know, that was my plan. Mm. Uh, after six days in the house, um they pulled me out of the house, which like literally never happens. You um, went to the diary room, right? Yeah, or it was in the diary room, and the uh, it's really really weird. Um, there's a door to go in the diary room, but then there's a door on the other on the opposite wall, and like I've been through one whole season and, and never saw that door open. So when I sit down in the diary room and that door opens up, and the, one of the executive producers, it's like just kind of like 
come here, we need to talk to you. It's like, all right, what the fuck, what the fuck is going on? You know, I've been in trouble before in the house and I've gotten my talkings too, but I've never been pulled out of the house before. So I was just like, you know, what is the deal? So they sat me down with the, the show doctor. Um, and he told me that there was, uh, it was really, really weird. The whole way that they did it was really weird. Um, they told me that they had done, they'd done, you know, they take blood and piss and everything else for a drug test and uh, check you for STD, so on and so forth. And they said that they did two tests. One test came back, oh, two tests for HIV. One came back positive and one came back negative. And he's like, I'm sure it's nothing to worry about, da, 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 but we want to do another test. Uh, just to make sure. So we want to pull you out of the house and, you know, just take some blood and I'll run it over to Cedar Sinai here and uh, have them do like the hour quick test and be right back and we'll put you right back in the house and we'll just get on with business. I'm like, all right, cool. So um, he's gone for fucking hours. Like, like it wasn't a, like an hour gone. And, and what's Cedar's going through your mind in that hour? Because they've told you one's positive, one's negative. Yeah. I do you, I do you have any sort of, you know, we, we talk about gut instinct. Do you have anything in your gut going, oh, goodness me? I had, no, I didn't. I didn't like, I wasn't worried about it at all. Um, being, I don't know, I just wasn't worried about it. Um, I, I don't know. Things, things fuck up. Uh, I just figured that, you know, hey, whatever, do whatever you need to do. Um, I didn't think I was like HIV positive. It's like the last thing on my mind, to be honest with you, even after they said that. So um, I was just kind of like waiting to get back in the house. But then after time's dragging on and on and on, it's like, all right, what the fuck is going on? Are you guys going to feed me? Like, what's going There's no TV in this room. There's not, nothing for me to do. I'm sitting here in this room by myself. They send in a producer to like, Give me small talk. It was the most uncomfortable, weirdest time with that uh, Don woman. Very nice. And do you guy. imagine? But, are they recording? Do you uh, or had they told no, you that no. they'd stopped recording at this point? No. If I'm out of, the, I'm out of the house. The only cameras are only in the house. Oh, they're not so, in that. Okay, got it. No, it was like the, where they put me was. Uh, I don't know if you if you're on the lot. The Big Brother house is not really a house. Mm -hmm. It's a it's a stage, yeah. uh, and they make it look like a house inside. Um, but, um, uh, yeah, but it's not a house. So they bring me out and bring me like across the street into this little crappy green room. Um, and that's where I was for hours and hours and hours. Anyhow, he finally, the doctor cut, finally, the doctor comes back and he's like, um, Hey, you know, I told him to do the one hour test and they're doing the one day test. Like somebody over there fucked up. So I need to take some more blood and, you know, go back and have them do like the right test. Which the whole thing, I know, it, it just sounds like, even now, you know, how many right. years later, it just sounds like bullshit to me. So uh, he takes more blood. I'm like, whatever. So he takes more blood, goes back to Cedar Side. And, and again, it's hours. By this time, it's like literally like eight or nine or 10 hours or something. I'm sitting in that stupid room. Uh, and finally, he comes back. And, um, uh, and he told me that I was HIV positive, And I didn't. I didn't even know how to react, to be honest with you. I didn't even, it's, I don't know, there's, it's hard to, it's really, really hard to explain. There's, I talked to, um, side story real quick. Yeah. In this last, in this last year, I did the Ancestry.com and I found out that I had seven half siblings and then I did the 23 and me in August and I found out I had, there was another one. So I found out, I found out I've had like the, these eight brothers and sisters. So when I met one of the brothers, Greg, uh, he lives in North Carolina. He came down, um, January, uh, and we spent a few days together. Anyhow, he was diagnosed with cancer. And when, when I was talking about like my diagnosis, I'm like, how is it for you? Like, like really, how is it for you when they told you? And he's like, Dude, it's it was exactly how you describe it. It was like the most surreal moment in my life. I felt like I felt like I was like like walking through a cloud or something. People are talking at you and you're acknowledging and you're hearing them, but you're really not hearing them. You're so in your own fucking head that it's just like my biggest worry was um, I was in a relationship um, for two years and living with my girlfriend at the time uh, in Colorado. So um, the biggest thing on my mind was, you know, did I infect her? Um, 
so I was, you know, with everything else, and I got worried about this, and then with the show, and then I asked him, I, I even asked the doctor, I'm like, so am I like, how did I put it? Can I not go back in the house or something like that? And what he told me was, um, and like CBS and the producers, they get all pissed off at me when I say this story. I don't give a fuck because this is this is what happened. Right. If they like it or not. Um, and he told me, he's like, if we if we had known that you were HIV positive, you would have never been allowed in the house. Really? They said that to you. It, the the doctor said it. so when you know, I don't know. And did they, sorry to I, cut you off, did they back no, that up okay. with a reason to say, we wouldn't have put you in the house if we knew you were HIV positive because, or was that no, it? He just, that was it. it. Like I said, it was, it was the show doctor. And later, later the producers tried to like cover this. It was like, the whole thing was so weird because I feel, I, I feel like they had their legal team on this from like the moment one to mm -hmm. cover their ass. Um, they, what really surprised me was it never leaked. It never leaked. It wasn't just, I know it was like a handful of people over there. Because like when I, when I say, before I went on the VH1 shows where I went public with it, which was years later, three, four years yeah. later, um, there was a gap of three or four years. And there was people besides the doctor that knew that I was HIV positive. At least a handful of people knew. But it never got out. Right. And I was like, I was like really impressed with that, to be honest with you. So what did you do in that? So you, you obviously didn't go back into the house and you're, you're known for sort of being the oh. big brother villain. Where do you go in that moment to find support? Oh, I. <sighs> there wasn't there was nowhere. There was there was there was nowhere. Um, it wasn't like. It's funny because when I talk to other people that are HIV positive, my experience is so different mm -hmm. from anyone else's. And like any of the people that I've talked to, they're like they're like appalled. When I that night, CBS got me a limo and they sent me to my mom's house. They got me a ticket to go home to Colorado the next day. The doctor gave me a phone number and said, you should call this number, and they could probably, they should be able to point you in the direction to go into treatment and so on and so forth. I li like literally had no idea like what the fuck I was supposed to do, where I was supposed to go, wh like what, how anything was supposed to happen. And on top of it, I have to tell my girlfriend, and, uh, and that night I spent the night at my mom's house who lived in LA, and she was the first person I told. Um, the next day was my girlfriend. I told her. And then I didn't tell anybody else for years, for two and, or three years. And keeping that inside and not telling anybody else, what did that do to you? It was really, really weird because um, there were so many rumors of why I left the show. There was so many rumors. There was, there, there was like literally a hundred or more rumors. Everything, everything that you could like possibly imagine. Mm -hmm. Not there was bad. one that said, it was so weird. There was one that said, um, uh, Dick's brother was in a horrific car accident and is in the emergency room. And my, I have a friend that works in the emergency room in Orange County Medical Center or some bullshit like this. And, it, it, and then I was like, I don't, I don't even have a brother. What the fuck are they talking about? Uh, this was before finding before, all these Before you found out you had a whole of a, fl a family gathered around the rest of the world. That's part one of my interview with Big Brother's Evil Dick. Join us next week for more.